Okay, so I waited to do the decals until after we got the patching done for obvious reasons, but now it's time to do the decaling itself, and I'll just brush over this really, really quickly. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show the decals that I'm going to be using for this, and I'm really excited about this actually because no one up to this point made the correct size for these uh, lettering patches that are more modern. You see a lot on a modern rolling stock, and recently. Um, Smokebox Graphics made a decal sheet for modern tank car data that has the correct size lettering for these cars, which is awesome. Also, they have some uh, correct prototypical data and the correct size uh, stencil blocks and everything like that. I'm also going to be using some other uh, decal sheets for the uh, car itself. So I'm just going to be taking several different decals from these different sheets uh, to, do the, uh, uh, to do the decals for this car. So I'll go ahead and cut some out, show you guys, and we'll go ahead and start applying them. Again, I'm going to brush over this very, very quickly so we won't spend too much time on the decals, but just enough to give you guys the idea of my decal application process. So we'll go ahead and get started here, guys. Here's all the data I've carefully cut out of all of these decal sheets. I'm going to be using all of these decals for this car on both sides and ends. Um, I'll take care of the end reporting marks a little later. I probably won't show that process. Uh, it's pretty pretty similar to uh, doing the sides and ends, or really just the, the sides. It's the same process of applying decal, so I won't show that part. Again, just real quick, here's the uh, decal data. If you guys want to get sheets like this to do a car of your own, here are the item numbers. Like I said before, I'm not going to dwell on uh, decals too much here. These are just like any other decals. You drop them in water for about five minutes or so. Let them all soak. And then I just start randomly applying these here and there. Once I get all the decals on, I just carefully line them up and get them centered. Just like that. Once everything is lined up, I will take a small brush like this. I use this kind of brush, this Atlas brush, as a number 255 specifically for uh, decaling. I start with Microsol first to tack everything in place, and I just give a good solid coat of Microsol to seal these decals and tack them in place. Once I do that, I'll go back and add a little bit of Walther's Savaset to these decals to completely seal them in place. I don't want to start with Savaset first because this is a lot more aggressive and if you're moving these decals around if you apply a Savaset to them you will destroy them so start with Microsol first and it helps to set your decals in place and it gives you a little bit more time to kind of work with them and settle them into their final positions but I'll go back and add the, uh, the Savaset after this. You can see how this all turned out here now Got the reporting marks on, data and everything is all on there. I know the F plate stencil is wrong, but unfortunately no one makes uh, the correct F style uh, plate F decal that these cars have. I'm actually working with a guy right now to see if I can get some of these decals made, but these F plate stencils right now are temporary, um, just so I have them on the car, so I at least have something to represent them. Uh, so I might change those later on if I can get these decals made, like I said. Uh, all the other little decals are on, uh, but again, that's just a, a basic little overlay of the decaling on these cars. It's pretty simple. Uh, this opposite side here with the whole car patch especially looks really nice. You guys can see all that fresh glossy patching. It's coming along good, coming along really, really, really good. So, what we'll do now, I'm going to work on the damage a little bit. Uh, this car doesn't have too much damage, but it does have some warped uh, parts on this top cord, so I'm going to go ahead and do that next with a little heat treatment. Alright, so let's go, go ahead and take care of the damage here. Um, this car does have some relatively hard dents on the top cord here. This is a common thing you see on these CND cars. I mean, they just get beat to hell in the industry. Cranes are always smacking into the sides, and as they're unloading them, the top of the crane will smack down the boom rather will hit the top cord. So you see these bent up all the time. And this car has some relatively uh, heavy denting on the top, so we're going to beat this up a little bit. Um, I, dented, I basically demonstrated this uh, in the gondola weathering how to do the dents and dings. You guys can watch that video. It's a couple videos back at this point, but I use the same technique here. Uh, the only thing you got to keep in mind with certain models like these Xactrio cars, this plastic is very fragile and ha parts have a tendency to fall off when you warm the plastic up. I found that out the hard way. I actually ruined a couple of these cars a long time ago when I first tried this. So I'm going to be using a very small hand torch here, a lighter. I got my uh, X-Acto uh, with just a needle bit in there. 
I'm going to be using this to kind of scrape up some of the dents too. And then I also have my uh, little dental pick. This is great for doing those dents. This is the tool I used mostly in that gondola weathering video. But all I'm going to do is start at the top. And what you do is you heat up a small area at a time. Just like this. I'm working outside too because my dog freaks out every time I light something up in the house. She goes crazy. It's hilarious. <laughs> so once I've heated that up, I can just bend that down slightly like this. Try not to go too crazy. You don't want to completely destroy the piece. You just want to warm it up enough. It's nice too because we're having a pretty cold uh, Sunday here today. It's actually really, really cold here. Uh, so it's helping to keep the car relatively cool. If you're doing this inside, just take a paper towel that's dampened and set it over the area you don't want to get affected and it'll keep the car sides cool. That's another little technique there. So I'm just going to keep working down this top cord and I'll keep putting these dents in. I think I'm running out of gas here though. There we go. And then we'll just put one more right here. There we go. And I'll go ahead and keep working down the car sides here. So the patches came out pretty good on this car. You guys can see all this. We've achieved that really cool fresh patch effect with the overspray on there. I really like that. So the next step on this project is to go ahead and start doing the dry brushing effects. And this is going to be the base coat of grime. Um, everything else will be oils, chalks, powders, and everything else that will come later. Right now we need to coat the car kind of around the... Uh, the ribs and the hatches and sort of at the base of the car is where you're going to see a lot of this grime kind of build up uh, the way it kind of streaks down the sides especially now that they're in C and D service they just get beat up so you get a lot of rust streaking so I'm going to be using my Citadel large brush to do the dry brushing these are great brushes to do dry brushing with I've used them on many locomotives and cars before they work great I'm going to be using straight burnt umber acrylic to do this as well I want a dark earth tone here so I'm going to be using this I'm going to start at this corner of the car and what I like to do is just take a little bit of this paint right from the cap and I'll just take a little bit of it off and I'll just kind of dry brush it here. If I take a little bit of it off on a rag, oops, there we go, I can just load my bristles up and then just start touching at the, the base of the car here. This is really again where a lot of that grime is so I'm going to be concentrating on this area for the most part just at the base and then I'll kind of work up a little bit but this is the more precise area I need to get all this covered I'm trying to be careful not to get too much of this on the patch though but keep in mind if we do get some acrylic on these fresh patches we can wipe it off with a q-tip because uh, it's just acrylic it's easy to clean up that's the nice thing with acrylic the bottom like that then I'll go to the top start at the top cord and then just kinda do a little bit of rough streaking I'm not trying to get complete coverage here I'm just dry brushing this to get some highlights of rust here and there. That's what you see on these cars, so I'm just achieving this with the dry brushing method. You could do this with airbrush, but the issue is you don't have complete control. Also, you'd just be spraying a ton of paint all over your fresh patching, so you'd have more cleanup to do. So that's why I want to do this by uh, using a brush. But just take your time with this and make sure everything gets covered nicely. On the interiors here, I'm switching to a flat brush. And I'm just going to be taking the paint and only t uh, I'm only painting the top portion of this car remember that we're gonna have a load in this but I at least want this top portion to uh, have some paint and weathering on it that way if the load sits low enough you can still see some uh, weathering and everything in there and you won't have like a flat black you know car body there's nothing more unrealistic than having your entire car weathered and then there's just that one little spot where maybe someone can see even if it's a load someone might be looking at the load when it's run on a model railroad or something and then see, oh, well the interior of the car is still black, you didn't weather that, you know. <laughs> I just try to make sure I get everything covered at least, so I'm just taking the time to get the entire interior painted. Make sure to get this uh, top cord as well. Get all that painted, including the ends as well. 